So I'm here with the list as far as I know, and there's always people that get contracts that I don't know about, but I have the list of who has gotten contracts. I have names, I'm happy to, to read them off if you want, but um, there are people that have gotten contracts at Covent Garden, at Chicago Lyric Opera, at Toulouse Salzburg Festival, Hamburg, Santiago Chile, uh, The Met, uh, an audition for the Young Artist Program. Uh, from last year there is one singer, um, Ms. Guseva, that I think you all know. Guseva, Guseva, Guseva. Who has already sung Mimi at the Wiener Schatzhof, who was a direct result of this audition last year, and has already been engaged again as a result of that. Um, there's a young singer who has who will leave Moscow in April to start a two-year fest contract at the Deutsche Oper Berlin as a direct result of the audition. She's sung for the first time one time here and has a two-year contract at Deutsche Oper. Yes, the um, names of these people, Pablo Petrov, uh, Igor Onyshenko, Oksana Sekerina, Alexander Mikhailov, uh, looking through Migran Agajanian, Anna Necheva, uh, Boris Pinkasovic. Do you know all of these people? These are the people that have gotten these contracts. Um, Vasilisa Berzhanskaya is going to Deutsche Oper. Vasilisa um, Berzhanskaya. In the past, other people that have gotten contracts from Naya, direct contracts, is we all know uh, Dmitry Belosielski. Yes? Uh, Dmitry came to sing in Vienna and had never stepped foot on a professional opera stage. In fact, I was casting in Palm Beach at the time and his professional debut ever was at Palm Beach Opera as a And I, I think that uh, Dimitri would be the first to tell you he started his entire career with one audition for this. Uh, uh, you're welcome to ask him. I think he got something like 12 contracts from one audition. Uh, um, also, Albina Shagimuratova sang one audition and a week later was hired, what, three days later was singing for Ricardo Muti and sang Queen of the Night in Salzburg within a week signed the contract from one audition in Vienna. <laughs> Which takes us to Mr. Krasnov, who also got, I think, four or five contracts last year. Palm Beach, Deutsche Oper. I think that uh, you got an offer from Kazan, but had to cancel because of the Golden Mask Festival, yes? So, Contracts are offered. I don't know why it's passed around that nobody gets hired. I can I think that the nature, forgive me, the nature of singers, and I used to be a singer, but the nature of singers is to not trust anything that costs you money. Uh, Я знаю природу певцов, и природа такова, что мы не доверяем ничему, что стоит денег. Um, yet you will... The, the difference is this, um, to say this as blatantly as I can. You will pay your voice teacher for six months without any trust that it's going to help you. Yet when I bring you tangible people that cast, it's my job for 15 years. I deal only with the people that cast, and I promise you, I know who actually casts in an opera house. Для сравнения, вы можете платить полгода, те же самые деньги полгода вокальному педагогу, который непонятно куда приведет, или заплатить те же деньги за прослушивание этим людям, которые он точно знает берут на работу. And the the reality is is I don't. As much as you all think, I don't make a great deal of money on this. I keep the price as low as possible because of you, because singers need the price as low as possible. But the costs for the people to come here, because theaters won't pay for these things to happen. 
very few theaters pay to send people around to hear auditions. Лично он не зарабатывает на это никаких денег, и он пытается держать цены на наиболее низком уровне, но проблема в том, что театры не оплачивают поездки этих людей на прослушивание, поэтому вот, затраты вот на это. And any of you that have worked professionally will know, you can always go to their theater and sing for them. You can go to London, and to Hamburg, and to Dusseldorf, and to Berlin, and to Toulouse, and to Palm Beach, and to New York, and maybe sing for them. But you will pay to go to each of those places. And tell me if that will cost you more money than 250 US dollars. <coughs> what we have changed this year is in the past, we would have a first level audition where people came to like a pre-audition and we would choose then who gets to sing in front of the final group. In the past two years, the level of singers across the board that has been singing in the first round has been sufficiently high that I don't see a reason to not simply let everyone sing for the theaters. If they don't like you, it's a different level of theaters. We have from small theaters to big theaters coming, and I don't see a reason to not just let you sing in front of them. So this year, everybody that registers simply sings. Раньше нужно было спеть предварительное прослушивание, но за последние два года уровень зверцов настолько вырос, что сейчас не нужно петь предварительное прослушивание, а можно петь сразу же финальный раунд. So, um, the theaters so far that are confirmed to come is the Staatsoper Vienna is coming back because they were so happy. Um, Warsaw is coming, <coughs> which is a probably the most visible climbing house in the world right now. It's, yeah, it's, 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 everybody's looking at Warsaw these days. Um, Stuttgart, which has a new uh, intendant coming in and a new casting director who is Boris Ignatov. So, so they're completely reforming the ensemble of the theater. Tel Aviv is confirmed, and Perm is confirmed, which is also, even though you all know Perm, outside of Russia, Perm is one of the theaters that everybody in the world is looking at purely because of Kurensis. The other theaters that uh, I'm waiting on a confirmation from are Zurich, Hamburg, wanting to come back after two years, Dortmund, who has a new game, a new uh, general music director. Amsterdam, Marseille, and Chicago Lyric Opera. So, these are the ones that, because we're still very early in the process, these are the ones that have said, let me, I think I can come, I will hold the dates, but I have to wait until they're firmly confirmed. The point of those particular theaters is that they look for established artists as well as young artists. Stuttgart, Dortmund, Hamburg, Tel Aviv, Warsaw all have young artist programs, which yeah. means they take young artists as well as main stage artists. Theaters ищут как молодых артистов, так уже артистов с становившимся карьером. So the truth of these auditions and why I brought them here is everybody wants to hear Russian singers. Um, and currently there are two or three very tight channels for a Russian singer to be heard internationally. Either you go out of this country to sing for a competition, which costs money, or you work with one of the agencies that works internationally, which there are only 
to my knowledge, there are only really two right now. It's Askenas Holt and uh, Takt. But other than that, you have to hope that you get hurt somewhere. Для русских певцов, которые хотят слышать во всем мире, на самом деле всего два пути, куда бы попасть, это прослушиваться. То есть это через конкурсы и работа с агентствами, которых, насколько он знает, всего два. Это так и Асконос Холд. So, um, and they are obviously very good agencies, yeah? May I ask you? Yeah, please. Yeah, and one more, maybe Sivana Sinta. It's my... Uh, I see. I don't, yeah. I don't know how much yeah. she works. I know that it, outside of Russia, yeah. if someone is casting a Russian opera, mm -hmm. in general, what they do is, in general, what, to my knowledge, what they do is they call Askenas, yeah. who is known for years to be a strong connection into the Russian <coughs> artists, or Takt, Alex Grigorev, or they call Vdovin or Gegeva. Mm -hmm. This is the normal yeah. route that people follow. If you are not in one of those networks, you do not have access. They yes. simply don't know you exist. Yes. They know you're good, but they, yes. they don't know you exist. Yeah, and one more is, uh, uh, will be a Kempinski Foundation, Young Artist Program, Kempinski Foundation, which ah. is a great, yeah, ah. I talk with owner, uh, Marilia Van Dalen, she is mm -hmm. interested to come in. For this would be a joy. Yeah. I think that the, the reality is this, is that the singer market in Russia, um, is so big that it could use two or three more channels for how to find singers because there are many when when Covent Garden or Salzburg or the Met does a big production they need not only the singers for the cast but they need covers they need second covers sometimes um, and they need all of the small roles and they prefer to get that from native Russian speakers However, for every time the Met does a Russian production, Dortmund and Rostock and Graz also do Russian productions. Do you see? Um, other theaters, Bari, is going to do an Onegin. Uh, so other theaters all over the world do these things, yet they don't pay as much as the big theaters, so sometimes they don't know quite how to get the singers easily. And those are the important ways to get another channel or two with the Kempinski Foundation, with Silvana, but also continuing with Alex and Talk because they do good work. I've known Alex for 15 years. He's, I count him as one of my closest friends, and he does very good work, but he's only one agency. And there need to be other ways for singers to be heard. And this is why I do this here. I do this here as an option for those that don't get hurt by the other places. Хорошо, он говорит, что рынок певцов в России очень велик, а каналов каналов очень мало. И та работа, которую вот Дэвид проделает, это для того, чтобы дать возможность русским певцам быть услышанным на Западе. Еще одна возможность. Да, и Петрович перечислил города, Грац, Дортмунд, Бари, Росток, где требуют, где есть русские оперы, постановка, где требуются русские певцы. И иногда бывает, что в одной постановке требуется не одно, один а, дублер, а еще и второй дублер требуется. И требуется очень много маленьких партий, поэтому российский рынок, он очень интересен. So... In my opinion, from where I sit, I mean, my job, to make it very clear, over the past 15 years, is to scout singers and help them have opportunities. That's what I do. In the middle of there, I worked for IMG to do exactly that, uh, which is when I first started coming to Russia on a regular basis, to Moscow on a regular basis. I cast operas. I was the casting director in Palm Beach for a couple seasons. I have worked as a casting consultant for a number of theaters, but what has been my work is finding people and giving them opportunities. Because I listen and know, when I listen to you, I know 
if you should be singing at the Met or singing in, in, in Chemnitz. Do you see there's difference? There's a lot of opera happening every night. For each Tosca at the Met, there are six other Toscas at different size houses. And maybe that is better for you. And so I create the opportunity to sing for those places. Uh, он работал uh, кастингом консультантом при многих театров, при многих театрах, но его основной uh, своей задачей он считает um, давать певцам возможности петь согласно их уровню в, в театрах соответствующего уровня. Так so, quite frankly, the, the last thing that I will say, and then I'll take your questions, is I personally don't understand why any singer in Russia would not be singing for this. I don't understand why you wouldn't take the opportunity uh, to do this. It's, I'm sorry, it's not very expensive, comparatively. It's an enormous opportunity across a wide range because each of these people also talk to other people constantly. When you sing for one person, you're singing for everyone they know, frankly. And if you get one job, you have paid $250. One little job is going to pay you $10,000. One. Let alone three or four or five or six, or one that has 12 performances. Honestly. Если вы спели, скажем, до 10 человек, это значит, что вы спели для всего бизнеса, потому что они постоянно друг с другом общаются. И одна работа может принести сразу 10 тысяч долларов или больше. I guess I would, I would ask, Alex, was it worth singing? Стоило ли это того? Я могу сказать вот только свою историю вкратце. Я являюсь штатным певцом в Екатеринбурге, и когда ехал на это прослушивание, конечно, тоже очень сильно удивился такой сумме, потому что вам немножко проще москвичам. Цены на билеты, вы, наверное, не знаете, очень большие до Москвы от Екатеринбурга. И затраты на проживание тоже довольно такие серьезные. Тем более из театров нас не очень любят и хотят отпускать, и поэтому нам пришлось потратиться еще чуть больше, чем вам. Но мы подумали, мы настроили, четверо поехало от этого театра молодых певцов, и даже пятеро. В общем-то, если уверенность есть своего уровня и хочется какой-то хочется заявить о себе, есть какие-то произведения и партии готовые, то совершенно точно стоит прослушаться, потому что мы так рассудили, что нет смысла. Все равно все, кто приехал на прослушивание, на это агенты, смысла им заработать на этом, наверное, нет. Раз они приехали, видимо, действительно нужда в певцах есть. И если накачанный духом, почему нет, почему не выступить и не обменяться? взаимным желанием. Вот а на, этом, к, на этом прослушивании я нашел, меня нашел агент, э, я получил, э, ну, Айк сказал, что там с небольшими ответвлениями, сразу я получил четыре э, предложения прямо вот по выходу из, из дверей. Это, был Казань, это Казань, это Чебоксары из русских театров, э, это э, вот, Барби Чопера и, и по-моему, Дюссельдорф, ну, если не ошибаюсь, я не помню еще какой. Я не понимаю, просто э, уже дальше агент смотрел, э, занимался моими контрактами. Но самое главное, что агент ко мне подошел, нашел у меня, завязался разговор, обменялись контактами. И в течение вот этого года я отработал 14 разных контрактов э, ну, в разных э, постановках. Поэтому я думаю, что стоит слушаться, стоит тратиться. И действительно, вот сейчас, когда количество спектаклей, там, сейчас до 19 до 18 до конца 18 -го года у меня расписаны контракты в разных театрах, в том числе Deutsche Oper, Леонская опера, 
я утро, извините, я куплю. Ну, в общем, в общем, я думаю, что стоит, стоит слушаться, стоит попробовать свои силы. И я вот вспомнил, что хочу сказать, что даже сейчас, когда вот эти контракты приносят хорошие дивиденды, все равно две, две трети того, что я получаю, я вкладываю в дальнейшее развитие себя. То есть мне приходится снова ездить, даже имея трех агентов на данный момент, мне приходится через них ездить, слушаться и так далее. То есть мне кажется, не нужно экономить на раскручивании себя. Ну, вот как-то так. Слушаться стоит. I think he's exactly right that as a singer, um, one of the things that is a bad thing for singers that you have to learn very quickly is you have to invest in your business. Just like anyone else, a lawyer is constantly learning new things, is going to conventions and classes to, to have new certifications. A doctor, I have a friend who's a doctor who lives in Surrey, every year, at least six times, She's going to another city in another country to maintain her business, to know what is new and what is best, and make herself better. In other careers, in other professions, like jurists, doctors, people are constantly doing self-development and self-improvement. Constantly going to some for a few times in other cities, in other countries, to get new knowledge. And one of the biggest mistakes is to stay on the spot. It's also important to stay on the spot. And you wouldn't think two times about your voice teacher. It's important to see your voice teacher, you say. This is normal. However, this doesn't seem to translate to many singers that your voice teacher is paying to make your package, your product better. Yet, you also have to pay to make your product better and invest in other things. Because if you're only paying your voice teacher and singing in the studio with your voice teacher, that's not a career. You have to find a way to take that onto the stage and be paid for it. That's the goal. И вот, в смысле времени и денег для того, чтобы делать, делать карьеру, потому что вокальный педагог это всего лишь голос, а сейчас существует масса других аспектов. So this is the this is the information from me about the the auditions. Now ask me, what do you want to know about this project, about why it's worthwhile, how to prepare best for it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Вопрос был, важно ли проявлять актерские способности на прослушивание и где эта граница, то есть насколько, насколько далеко можно заходить? Um, today, you know, acting is as important, if not more important than your singing. Yeah, that's, that's, that's clear. That's clear. Yeah, that's clear. Now, during an audition, what's important there is a line, and, and it's impossible for me to say to you simply where the limit is, because that's very personal and changes from person to person as to how you inhabit a character. But the, what we need to see is we need to have the sensation that you are a malleable, involved actress. Does that make sense? Malleable yeah. means can be formed, yeah. that you are flexible, yeah. Um, we need to see that you have the ability to show us that you are in the character. To an extent, we need to see that if, when we put you on the stage, you are going to be good. That's constantly a question. When we hear somebody, 
we will say, I just last week I was in London having auditions and the person next to me and, and, and I were speaking with a singer and we were like, you just know that this singer is great on stage, you feel it. Because they're showing us the character in a way that, that comes across clearly. They're not on the ground, they're not killing Scarpia, but it's clear that this person can. I mean, forgive me, Alex, I will use you as an example. Alex, when he sings, he doesn't move in an audition. He doesn't move around a lot. But there is such a clarity of the character in his actions and in his physicality of the character that it's absolutely clear that he's an animal on stage. So we don't need to see him doing it. We need to know that it can be done. Yes, please. В современном опытном бизнесе актером быть также, если не более важно быть актером, чем певцом. И не обязательно устраивать мизансцены, валяться на полу и убивать там персонажей, но важно донести до до тех, кто прослушивает, до кассик директоров, то, что донести четкий образ. То, что ты можешь быть убедительным на сцене, собственно, вот. Через свою физику, через свои интонации, через глаза, через, через позу и так далее. There is, there is such thing as too much. Yeah, exactly. есть, uh, есть, конечно, my experience, когда, когда перехлёст, когда слишком много. My experience has been that too much is when somebody is not... 100% committed to what they're doing. Yeah. I've seen people, I have a general rule that you never get on the ground during an audition. Don't be laying on the ground or sitting on the ground. Yet the moment I say that, I can think of at least one person, David Adam Moore, I don't know if you oh, know yeah, David. Oh yeah, of course I have worked with Yeah, David, when he sings auditions, or for many years, he would sit on the floor to sing Billy Budd. Now, Everyone in 15 years that has been on the floor, other than David and maybe one or two other people, has been a disaster. Because they sit down on the floor, but they're a little bit hesitant. They're not fully committed to that. Yeah, I mean, you have to prove every action you make. Any move has to, be, has to have a reason. Yeah. And if you're committed to it, we follow. Do you remember that parkour a lot? What? Parkour, really? Yeah. Uh -huh. It's like for many years. He's, he is, he is an athlete, so yeah, exactly, and you see that, but also because of the choices he makes artistically, you follow him, and that's how every audition is. If your artistic choices are strong and believable, if there is a reason for you to be acting, quote unquote, then we follow you. The moment, for example, if I'm talking to you and I, I say this, this is clear to you. But if I kind of do this, and it stays there. You see, if I'm singing and I do that, it means nothing. Because it's not committed, it's half there. If you're going to make an action, make an action and make it strong and then get rid of it. But all acting is like that, especially in auditions, because that's how we know that you can be on stage. Um, ну, в общем, Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Uh, первое, что он сказал, например, вот си сидеть на земле, там, на полу, uh, во время прослушивания мог только один человек, которому, о котором он говорил, Дэвид Адам Мур, с которым я тоже работал, я подтверждаю, он атлет, он занимается паркуром, когда он поет, сидя на полу, это убедительно. С другими я не работаю. Второе, что он сказал, это то, что каждый жест должен быть оправдан, и каждый жест должен за собой что-то нести. И он, он, и, и каждый жест должен быть, должен отработать свое. Допустим, если есть какая-то фраза, идет вот такой жест, а, то в следующий момент от жеста нужно избавиться, потому что он сделал свое дело. Если же Певец сделал и продолжает так петь, это не имеет никакого смысла, это сразу показывает уровень его актерского мастерства. Yeah. For example, if you want another example, while he was speaking, while I'm speaking, if you notice, we all use our hands while we're speaking. 
It's normal. While you were right. speaking, while everyone is doing this, in, it in Italy it's like a joke. If you, there's a joke that says if you want to stop an Italian from speaking, make them sit on their hands. Um, but the, the thing is, is that when we speak, our hands follow our gestures. It's natural. You never see somebody just speaking like this, or for God's sake, you never see this one. Nobody ever speaks like this, yet they sing like this constantly. This is the thing, or you, when I'm talking, I don't ever do this or the this thing. These are singer gestures. That's your technique, and we're not interested in seeing your technique while you're talking. So just be real to us. Use your hands when you need to, and if not, just stand. Опять же, то, то же самое. Используйте, используйте жесты только тогда, когда они нужны. И не используйте, как он говорит, что мы не хотим видеть певческую технику, выраженную в руках, чтобы руками показывал, как ты поешь. The other thing I would encourage you is to remember you're on an opera stage. It has to be real, but it has to be big. You can't be like this unless you're on the video. Other question? Yes, a small addition to this. Sure. Um, a friend of mine who is um, now doing a career in Finnish Tatsopa, mm -hmm. she once said that at the audition, you, you would ask normally whether you can act or the jury would prefer not to. Would that would be a, I would say if I heard that question in an audition, I would find that a little odd. Uh, okay. Just because, um, and this is, I mean, this is for a longer thing that we actually, I and I were saying that maybe the week before this audition, I'll come back and do a, like a, like a class to talk about how you need to be in the audition, because this is for a much longer, deeper discussion. But how to audition and what to yeah. do in an audition. Um, but briefly with that, what I would say is um, an audition, at the very bottom level, the foundation of an audition is for us to get to know you. It will take us five seconds to decide if we like your voice and if we, know you know, if we think you know how to sing, because that's what we do for a living. And the only person who's ever surprised when the singing doesn't come out the way you want is you, because we knew it wasn't going to come out right within ten seconds. 